Hi, I'm Carl Azutz for CNN 10. Welcome to everyone watching worldwide. It's great to see you this Monday. The month of April is drawing to a close, and this Friday, the first Friday of the new month, the U.S. government's latest jobs report is due out. It'll look at economic indicators like the unemployment rate, the percentage of the American workforce that doesn't have a job. For the past two months, it's been at 3.8 percent, considered a very low rate and a good sign for the economy. The report monitors whether wages are growing and by how much wage growth can be a good sign, and it'll examine the number of jobs that were added to the economy in April. That statistic has been a roller coaster this year. Hiring boomed in January with more than 300,000 jobs added. The number dropped dramatically in February with less than 35,000 added, and it bounced back in March with just under 200,000 new jobs. Predicting what the economy will do, how much it'll grow, is done by looking at information like this and by reading the trends in the U.S. stock market. Christine Romans from CNN Money explores how it continues to rise and what could slow that down in the months ahead. Resilience is still the word in stocks. After one of the best first quarters in years, April brings the major U.S. averages close to record highs. This year, the Nasdaq is up more than 20 percent, the S&P 500 up 16 percent, the Dow up 13 percent. The Dow is now up more than 40 percent since the election. Now, so far, the beginning of earnings season hasn't changed this narrative. Yes, profit growth is expected to turn negative in the first quarter, but guess what? Investors largely saw that coming. The U.S. economy is growing and the job market is strong. Wages are beginning to pick up, but overall inflation is low. There's enough confidence in the markets and the economy to bring a wave of tech startups public, the so-called unicorn parade of IPOs. Ten years into an economic expansion, and J.P. Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon told shareholders the expansion could run for years more. What could go wrong? Well, plenty. The early benefits of new tax laws in the U.S. are beginning to fade. Rising gas prices could bite consumers, oil prices are up 35 percent this year, and the average price of gas in the U.S. jumped almost 10 cents in a recent week. America's trade wars are ongoing and trade talks unfinished. Beware a breakdown in trade talks with China or a worsening trade situation between the U.S. and its largest trading partner, the European Union. President Trump has until May to decide whether to slap tariffs up to 25 percent on European car imports. Any of these factors could make the historic stock market run a lot more vulnerable. 10 second trivia. According to the Pew Research Center, 77% of Americans have what? Is it a smartphone, landline, dog, or passport? Smartphones are the answer here, and cell phones in general are owned by 95% of Americans. A debate is raging over kids and screen time. How much of the day they should spend in front of TVs, smartphones, tablets. The World Health Organization recently released guidelines on this. It says for young kids, screen time needs to be limited to an hour a day or less. That's similar to a recommendation by the American Academy of Pediatrics. Experts say too much screen time early in life is associated with delays in language skills, social skills, even the brain's ability to think. But there are other studies that suggest limited screen time, especially with educational apps or programs, can encourage creativity and sometimes problem-solving skills. So the research is mixed. In some classrooms for older kids, administrators have found a place for artificial intelligence. What's not known is whether this could be a substitute for old-school education. A timeless scene that has been played out in schools around the world for centuries young students enjoying their break between lessons. But back in the classroom of this school in Abu Dhabi, a transformation is happening. In this lesson, you learn to solve equations with rational coefficients. Whiteboards, markers, and books have been replaced with interactive calendars, digital avatars, and laptops. Let's solve this equation together. 14-year-old Maria Mohammed is just one of 25,000 students in the UAE and the U.S. being taught through the Olive Education platform. When we was using books, it was like so boring, so it's nice to use new technology in learning, not in a traditional way. Founded in Abu Dhabi in 2015, the online program is using technology to disrupt traditional education in the classroom. Children are encouraged to create their own avatar. 
And through the use of videos, animation, digital content, and questions along the way, the Aleph platform aids learning. At its headquarters in Abu Dhabi, in a secured control room, analysts use artificial intelligence to make sense of the reams of information coming in. So we capture millions of data points on a daily basis. A human cannot process that many data points. The premise is simple. If a pupil struggles with a concept, the system adapts and presents the lesson again in a form more tailored to the student. The result is reframing the future of education. Wouldn't it be great if you could look at artificial intelligence and data to drive kids into the right careers, into the right choices post-secondary education? When it comes to adopting AI technology, the United Arab Emirates is one country leading the way. But with artificial intelligence expected to generate $96 billion towards the economy by 2030, some are worried that this technology comes at a cost, with a growing debate over whether the benefits outweigh increased screen time for children or potential privacy concerns. U.S. Centers for Disease Control estimates that one in 59 children in America has been diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. It can involve problems communicating, bonding emotionally, or repeating the same behaviors. Dr. Wendy Ross was named a CNN hero in 2014 for her work to help children on the spectrum take part in everyday activities. Now she's helping the medical industry better understand patients with autism spectrum disorder. Patients coming in on the spectrum may have a more difficult time communicating. Those with autism also have heart attacks or cancer. And without doctors that can understand how to interact with them, they're not going to get appropriate health care. Alex, I know you've been using the letter board, but can you tell me what was it like to be unable to communicate for so long? My patient, Alex Lepap, despite being nonverbal, actually has an IQ that is very, very high. It was frustrating. I had some tough days, but the first time I spelled openly, I knew my life had changed forever. Done. You never want to underestimate somebody's ability. But then again, doctors need to understand, for someone on the autism spectrum who doesn't often look at faces, that pain scale, that's not really a good way of monitoring their pain. Some of the accommodations that our program provides are noise-canceling headphones, things like fidgets to help reduce their anxiety. We are really providing autism-friendly health care. What would you like to tell other people about you and other people on the spectrum? We are so thirsty to learn, period. Our brains are like sponges. Alex has a lot to say, and so he's really become a huge part of our program in terms of consultation on making things autism friendly. What was the moment like when you realized that other people could understand you? It was like the Eagles winning the Super Bowl. <laughs> we want those on the spectrum to exceed everyone's expectations, including their own, and we would like to exceed everyone's expectations in the care that we deliver. A lot of kids with dogs know the animals only wish they could ride the school bus. Now, they can. A man in Portland, Oregon offers a service that picks up pups in a custom van. He takes them to a large fenced-in pasture that's like this giant dog park for the day so they can run, play, and be dogs. And then he takes them back home. One difference between this and school recess, though, sometimes kids are allowed to join the animals on a play date. So in this case, the kids and the van have gone to the dogs. Wonder if the animals hound or pug their owners about this, barking about how they like staying home most of the time, but love their newfound land of recess and wish they could skip or key over their ear more often pincher. From time to time, they gotta let out their Rottweiler side. I'm Carla Zeus, down making a barkload of puns for CNN.